How's it going, guys? We have an easy question for pharmacology for step one and for step two, okay? Not going to be a lengthy clip here. I'll just tell you some high-yield points you need to know, not waste your fucking time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 68-year-old woman. She has a three-month history of increased frequency of falls. She has type 2 diabetes mellitus, hypertension, osteopenia, gastroesophageal reflux, secondary to diabetic gastroparesis. She's on lisinopril, metformin, alendronate, metoclopramide, and cimetidine. Uh, physical exam shows decreased spontaneous movement in all extremities and cogwheel rigidity of both wrists. On gait testing, she walks in short steps. Question wants to know the most appropriate next step in management. Let's just walk through the answer choices here. Choice A, discontinue alendronate. Wrong fucking answer. This is a bisphosphonate, okay? Bisphosphonates inhibit osteoclasts. That's an important mechanism of action. Same as endogenous calcitonin, okay? Calcitonin and then exogenous bisphosphonates, such as alendronate, inhibit osteoclast activity. These can, call, these can cause pill-induced esophagitis, all right? So burning in the throat, uh, must remain upright at, uh, for half an hour after consumption, drink with lots of water. Pill-induced esophagitis, uh, potassium supplements can also cause pill-induced esophagitis. Very high yield points for family medicine. Uh, some students get pedantic about uh, osteonecrosis of the jaw. Very fucking rare that that, I, I, like the yieldness of that is through the fucking floor, okay? I mean, it's the pill-induced esophagitis that USMLE actually cares about. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, discontinue cimetidine, wrong answer. It's an H2 blocker, okay? I mean, unusual to be on these to begin with. Uh, patients uh, should be on proton pump inhibitors usually. USMLE wants you to know that PPIs uh, such as omeprazole are more efficacious than H2 blockers because PPIs are irreversible where, uh, and non-competitive, whereas uh, H2 blockers are reversible and competitive, okay? So PPI is more efficacious. Cimetidine can cause gynecomastia. Okay, that's an important uh, side effect of this drug that's assessed in step one you should be aware of. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, discontinued metoclopramide, is the correct answer. Okay, so metoclopramide is a D2 antagonist that is both an antiemetic and a prokinetic. Patients who have diabetes can get gastroparesis, okay, they can get neuropathy to any part of their bowel. Okay, stomach, small bowel, colon, etc. So metoclopramide, it's a prokinetic, it increases peristalsis. If patients get GERD, uh, we can try metoclopramide first. Okay, so situation maybe the patient was already on metoclopramide, then they added cimetidine. The point is uh, the metoclopramide D2 antagonist can cause extra pyramidal side effects in Parkinsonism, similar to the antipsychotics. Okay, so this can cause acute dystonia, it can cause akathisia, can cause Parkinsonism, can even cause tardive dyskinesia. So the first thing we want to do here is just discontinue the D2 antagonist. Okay, this patient has what's likely to be metoclopramide-induced Parkinsonism. All right, so we just discontinue the metoclopramide, we see how things improve over weeks, and then we can look into more Parkins like actual Parkinson disease or other uh, Parkinson plus syndromes as a possibility, but we're going to remove the D2 antagonist first, okay? We're not going to add these Parkinson drugs. Carbidopa, levodopa, I mean, this is often used first line in Parkinson disease. We don't want to give levodopa alone because it uh, it is broken down peripherally, so we give the carbidopa along with it, which is a competitive antagonist, prevents the breakdown, decreases the breakdown of levodopa peripherally so it can cross the blood-brain barrier, okay? Ropinirole, it's a D2 agonist that uh, this is classically a treatment for restless leg syndrome, okay? So restless leg syndrome, you need to know the most common cause is actually iron deficiency anemia. I know that sounds weird, but you want to check patients' iron levels first. And if they're normal, you add rapinirole or primapexil. It's not a crisis. I've seen both as answers. Bromocryptine tends to be the D2 agonist. That's a treatment for prolactinoma, okay? Just my observation on USMLA. So add levodopa, carbidopa, and rapinirole. Wrong fucking answers. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.